Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Monday, January 13th, 2020. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 49. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have voting machines connected to the internet and Palestine lost on Jeopardy. But first... I discovered a planet. He's not kidding. 17-year-old Wolf Sukier actually discovered a planet 1,300 light years away. The planet is seven times larger than planet Earth. What's interesting about this planet is that it orbits two stars. Just like Luke Skywalker. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Just like Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. I know. It's great. Walker's home planet from Star Wars, this planet has two sunsets from its two stars. Wolf, a senior at Scarsdale High in New York, made the remarkable discovery while interning at NASA. Cool stuff. Pretty cool. Cool discovery as an intern. Dude. Yeah. That's why you got to get those interns. Yeah, you know, internship. That's never cool. know what's going to happen. Especially at NASA. Wow. Yeah. And discovering a planet. What? Dream come true. NBC Nightly News. Flu deaths. According to the CDC, pediatric deaths are double what they were the same time last year. And overall, in just one week, total deaths from flu have spiked from 2,900 to 4,800. In total, 87,000 people hospitalized. In Boston, longer waiting times and patients even treated in the hallways. We're noticing a level of crowding that is concerning us, and we still have a lot more flu season ahead of us. Doctors say most people can treat their flu symptoms at home. See your doctor if you have shortness of breath, dizziness, dehydration, or an underlying medical condition. Interesting report. (laughs) CDC flu chart. This is according to the CDC. Yeah. Looks like looks like a typical looks like typical t- flu, flu so far. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I don't know. And it follows the same trend of January is typically where it spikes yeah. up. So it's, it's not surprising that it's doubling. Yep, it is what it is with the flu. Plus, be I've, safe out there. I feel like we hear this report every year. Yeah, though. it's they always say that. Oh, every year the hospitals are lining up. Yep, every around this time. Every, yep. I, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, We'll be doing healthy talk show next year. It'll be the same thing. <laughs> Ars Technica, U.S. government-funded Android phones come pre-installed with unremovable malware. The first is heavily obfuscated malware that can install adware and other unwanted apps without the knowledge or permission of the user. Android slash Trojan dot dropper dot agent dot UMX contains striking similarities to two other Trojan droppers. For one, it uses identical text strings and almost identical code. And for another, it contains an encoded string that, when decoded, contains a hidden library named com.android.google.bridge.something. Once the library is loaded into memory, it installs software Malwhite, M- M- malware bytes calls Android Trojan hidden ads. It aggressively displays ads. The second unpleasant surprise, delivered by the UMX U686CL, that's the phone, is something called wireless update. While it provides a mechanism for downloading, and installing phone updates, it also loads a barrage of unwanted apps without permission. The app is a variant of Adups, an app from a China-based company by the same name. In 2016, researchers caught Adups serendipitously collecting data on hundreds of thousands of low-cost phones from Baloo. Wow. While all the installed <laughs> apps Malwarebytes examined were clean and free of malware, the presence of the feature that automatically installs apps poses an unacceptable risk, particularly since removing the feature prevents the phone from receiving updates, basically breaking the phone of overtime. Over the years, pre-installed malware has been found on low on a raft of low-cost Android phones from a variety of providers and manufacturers. An incomplete list includes a backdoor and hundreds of thousands of blue devices, a powerful backdoor and a rootkit also on blue devices, and a covert downloaders on 26 different phone models from various manufacturers. Wow. Yeah. Blue was quite controversial at the time. People don't remember this, but they were actually subsidized by our friends over at Amazon. Ooh. They were an Amazon subsidized phone. Yeah, I felt bad. I told my niece to buy one. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I didn't know about that. A year later, it came out. There were Chinese spying devices, essentially. Oops. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Uh, turn off your phone. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? There was a cheap phone. It's a $60 Android yeah. phone. It's a great deal. Well, unfortunately. Poor people, people, are, poor people are getting hurt on this one. They're oh, the yeah. ones made, made to suffer. This is BS. So we're installing malware on poor people's phones that's not cool on these obama phones or whatever you want to call them these phones that were free for low income that's oh, that no, is wrong nothing's free yeah nothing is free yeah. and obviously their dad yeah. is paying for something yeah and of course yeah now you're talking about poor people and what kind of manipulation are they being subjected to yep 
You don't know. They should just get a clean phone. Those phones are nice. They're Samsung Galaxy S3s, too. I really wanted one, but now with this malware on it. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. It sure is. Bloomberg, 23andMe, licenses its own drug compound to Spanish firm Almerol. Previously, the company made a deal to share its data and collaborate on drug development with UK drug maker GlaxoSmithKline, which took a $300 million stake in the company in 2018. But this is the first time it has licensed a compound it has developed in-house. The compound belongs to a class of large molecular drugs designed to target a single protein in the body, what's known as a bispecific monoclonal antibody. I think I said that right. Monoclonal yeah. antibody. The antibody is designed to block signals from a fair from a family of proteins known as IL-36 cytokine that is associated with many autoimmune and inflammatory conditions such as lupus, Crohn's disease, and Crohn's disease. 23andMe was most interested in the antibodies effectiveness to treat severe forms of psoriasis. The company put the drug compound through animal testing, but will still need to undergo clinical trials in humans. Very creepy. Yeah. 23andMe. Well, on on one hand, I want to be excited because... This could be cool developments for treating these diseases. Yeah, this was research uh, done unknowing, unwittingly. People submitted their yeah. DNA, did not know this is all going on now. Well, that's the other and side. You, you did it. You, you blew it. The cat's out of the bag. We're all screwed. I don't, it's just... Ah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just unfortunate because now we can't get this data back, though, but I do like the scientific progress. Yeah, but, that's fantastic. But, we don't know how else this data is being used or yeah. potentially being used against us. And because, Yeah, what people don't understand is this is all research that's being disclosed to us. For instance, defense research is not going to be disclosed to us. We're not going to hear about that in the press. We're not going to know what yeah. they're doing with this stuff as far as defense and military. We're not going to know. We'll never know. Or we'll know 50 years down the line. That's the disturbing part. It's the stuff we don't know about. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing that people don't talk about with these scientific progresses is once you kind of open Pandora's box, we can't go back. So Exactly. When you drop the A-bomb, you start yeah. the arms race. So this can information can be used for both good and bad purposes. Yeah, weaponization of information, unfortunately. And we're all about knowledge, information. Knowledge is power. It's true, knowledge is power. But... Who has the knowledge? 23andMe, they really have the... Do we have access to that database? Can we use it for our own research? I doubt I don't it. think so. The Guardian, Skype, audio graded by workers in China with no security measures. A Microsoft program to transcribe and vet audio from Skype and Cortana for years with no security measures, according to a former contractor who says he reviewed thousands of potentially sensitive recordings on his personal laptop from his home in Beijing over the two years he worked for the company, Microsoft. The recordings, both deliberate and accidentally, invoked activations of the voice assistant, as well as some Skype phone calls were simply oh, accessed wow. by Microsoft workers through a web app running in Google's Chrome browser on their personal laptops over the Chinese internet, according to the contractor. A lot of problems there. Workers had no cybersecurity help to protect the data from criminal or state interference and were even instructed to do the work using new Microsoft accounts with all, new, with all the same password for ease of management, oh the former gosh. contractor said. Employee vetting was practically non-existent, he added. This is scary. You're accessing Microsoft stuff with Google Chrome. First of all, why? That's stupid. Wouldn't you, if you work at Microsoft, shouldn't they be telling you to use Edge or <laughs> you know, the new Internet Explorer, which is called Edge? What is going on? Uh, Skype phone calls. What is this? Is crazy. Wait, I had a question because I thought the Skype phone calls were encrypted. I think the texts are. I don't think phone calls are. Oh. I don't think they are. We, I've, I remember they announced that they were looking into using whisper uh, signal encryption. I don't think. I think they did it for text. I don't think they did it for anything else. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Skype, don't outsource your stuff and use encryption. And wow, over the Chinese. That's just so weird because yeah. Skype's yeah. an American. Microsoft's an American company. That's, you would want to encrypt your stuff. Now they're just. But might be picking up information about you, your company, yeah. too. But that's the trend that we've seen is these companies always outsource this sort of work to, you know, the lowest bidder and outside companies, these contractors. Yeah. So we really have no idea who's actually listening in. Yeah, we don't. Once it's on the internet, it's yeah. on the internet. And now it can get shared and yep. spread and replicated. Yeah, that's why you don't want voting machines on the internet. NBC News. 
We've heard it at congressional hearings for years. Our voting machines are not connected to the Internet. Those are not connected. Voting machines themselves are not connected to the Internet. And we knew that wasn't true. And so, oh, Wait, what? We knew that wasn't true. They, uh, they just said it was. They weren't connected oh, to the Internet. No. I believed them. They were lying this whole time. Ay, ay, ay. For security expert Kevin Skoglin wanted to prove it. So he and nine other independent security consultants created their own search engine looking for election systems online. We found over 35 had been left online, and we're still oh, continuing to find left more. Left online? Yep. Just, yeah, just left online. No problem. Left online. ...themselves are not designed to be online. So how are some voting systems getting online? We got a first-hand look when we visited ESNS, the largest manufacturer of voting machines, and talked to CEO Tom Burt. Okay, why is there a Sprint thing here and a Verizon thing here? There's a small percentage of jurisdictions in the country, a lot of them are in Florida, uh, who have decided that they want to modem unofficial results uh, to the election office. You know, you do wonder sometimes whether or not uh, our thirst for quick results sometimes may be interfering with our thirst for accurate results. You know, Cynthia, that, that's not my place to judge that one again. These jurisdictions have a need for that. ESNS insists while there are 14,000 of its modems in use. 14,000 modems in use. 14,000. <laughs> Those are all connected to the Internet. Oh, there man. are firewalls separating those modems from the public internet. Bullshit. And the modems are turned on for just seconds. Sorry, <laughs> that's but right. Skoglin yeah, says yeah. that's not so, enough. You know, we're seeing um, Illinois and Michigan. Last summer, Skoglin's team found ESNS voting systems online in at least some of the precincts in 11 states, including the battleground states of Florida, Michigan, and Wisconsin. If you were able to get inside these systems... Could you do more than perhaps mess up the preliminary results? Could you actually get deeper inside the system? Absolutely, and that's that's my biggest concern. Top computer scientist Andrew Appel agrees with Skoglund. Once a hacker is, starts talking to the voting machine through the modem, they can hack the software in the voting machine and make it cheat in future elections. In August, Skoglund took his results to election officials uh, and the press, Florida, assuming the systems uh, would get down, taken down. The we were astonished when he showed us some of those systems that's right. are that's still you... online. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Of course. Those are a bad idea. Those modems are network connections, and that leaves them vulnerable to hacking by anybody who can connect to that network. We should make sure that voting machines are not connected to the Internet. Period. Period. The good news, Lester, experts told us most of the country votes with paper and pencil. Those ballots counted by scanners without modems. That means audits and recounts are possible. That's good. But holy moly, all these voting machines have modems in them? Why? What yeah. is... Ah, uh, huh. why, why, why everything on the internet? Why? Uh. This is why we need a healthy talk show to tell us these things, though. <laughs> exactly. Sky News, a good use for the internet. Hi, um, I'm calling from the U.S. I'm currently in a call with my friend. He had a seizure and he's not responding anymore. I do have his address and he lives in Wedna, Cheshire. Sorry, I'm shaking. <laughs> While the police and ambulance were dispatched, Aidan's parents were downstairs, unaware of the drama unfolding. Well, first we knew there was um, two police cars arrived out the front, flashing lights. I um, just had a look thinking that they were going elsewhere, and then they started to run up our path. They said uh, they've had a call, unresponsive mail at the address. Um, we said, oh, we've not called anyone. They said, no, the call's come from America, um, possible seizure. So then that made me think, Aidan. So I just run up the stairs and found Aidan. He was really disorientated and not really with it at all. Aidan's saviour was 20-year-old Dia Lathora, who could hear that he was in trouble. Okay. So, I'm going to stop it here. Sounds like a great story. Two friends are playing video games online. One of them starts having a seizure. The one in the U.S. calls to save her friend in the U.K. Beautiful story. Yeah. I'm okay. A I'm a little... F nah, I'm just saying, listen to this kid's story. I don't believe what, the, I don't believe what was going on. It's just, it's just... I'm questioning... I'm not questioning the kid had a seizure or anything. I'm just questioning what was going on with this. I've just gotten up from a computer to go and sit down in bed. I felt a little funny. Uh, so I turned my mic around so she could still hear me and then next thing I knew I was waking up with police and my parents in my room and 
saying that I, that I just had a seizure. I had no idea what was going on. Where's the webcam at? I think they were getting ready to do some naughty stuff on the webcam. What do you think? You know, kids these days. Wait, so where is the webcam? I don't know. Okay. They took it out of the shot. I have no idea. Uh-huh. He's got a fancy. He's got a fancy microphone. But where's the webcam at? It's not there. I don't know. Just saying. Cute story though. Really liked it. <laughs> it was touching because two online friends. Freaking. Yeah, she was, had his address, so they're obviously cute. pretty close. If she knows yeah, where the. Yeah, I was kind of curious she, about yeah, that. I don't have a lot of my online friends' addresses, so again. I don't know. Cute story, though. All right. Getting really conspiratorial now. <laughs> CBS This Morning lost Epstein footage. The well-connected 66-year-old was accused of sexually abusing dozens of underage girls. Mola Lange reports... Okay. That, not accurate, exactly. He was more of a facilitator of the abuse. So he's not... I wouldn't... Is he an abuser? Or is he the mm. facilitator? He's more of the facilitator. Let's talk about who's actually doing the abusing part. But that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Back to Epstein, because, okay. Or it's on the growing criticism of the jail where Epstein was held. A recent 60 Minutes broadcast shows the New York jail cell where Jeffrey Epstein hanged himself last August. But now, there's new focus on the suicide attempt Epstein made weeks before he died. Video of the cell exterior where Epstein first tried to end his life was sent to federal investigators and restored last week. But on Thursday... Prosecutors said it's the wrong video. Oh, what? Letter, federal prosecutor. Of course, it's the wrong video. Whoops. How is that possible? Whoops. I, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Peter said the jail inadvertently preserved video from the wrong tier of the sure. jail. Mm-hmm. And as a result, video from outside the defendant's cell no longer exists. Bullshit. CBS News legal and, analyst. And wait, Kleeman. wait. And what happened to the other video? They yeah, already where, deleted yeah, it? Where's the other video? Exactly. Well, we gave you the wrong video. What happened to the other one? Uh, it's scrubbed. You, you can't tell me that they collect Bleach so bit. much data on us and keep it for who knows how long. <laughs> oh, this prison video. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. we wiped can't it already. Get, we can get that ring video, no problem. But that yeah. prison video? Ooh, that very controversial prisoner who killed himself all of a sudden that everyone's questioning? Mm, that video's gone already. Mm-hmm. Here's a legal expert. When I read this letter... I had to reread it because I said, this just can't be happening. This is madness. Nicholas Tartaglione was Epstein's cellmate at the Metropolitan Correctional Center for the weeks between Epstein's July arrest and his first suicide attempt. Bruce Barquette is Tartaglione's attorney. It is the worst facility, jail or prison, that I've been to in 35 years of practicing law. The missing jail cell video could reignite speculation of a cover-up as the detention uh, facility uh, continues to be under fire for multiple failures before Epstein died in custody. When you've got videotape disappearing, cameras not working, guards allegedly not being uh, where they're supposed to be, it's no wonder that Jeffrey Epstein is dead. These things can happen, right? These things can happen, but they all shouldn't happen in one place. <laughs> at the yeah. same time exactly once yeah, exactly too I, ridiculous yeah even she what, even cbs what the hell is yeah. going on how are you what is this uh ay, ay, ay. switching gears to relationships inside edition why january is the month of divorce january has been dubbed divorce month because so many couples decide to end their marriages Lawyer Kelly Chang Rickard says divorce filings always tick up in January. People have a tendency to set New Year's resolutions. And so number one would be I'm getting divorced this year. Also, holidays are very stressful when you have family relationships. So a lot of times they're like, that's the last time I'm spending Christmas with that family. Google searches for the word (laughs) divorce. (laughs) <laughs> family drama. It's oh, always man. family drama. Divorce traditionally peak the first week of January. So why is January divorce month? Experts say some couples want to have one more holiday season as a family, especially if they have kids. But as soon as January 1st rolls around, the first call is to the divorce lawyer. Damn. New York Times, divorce. January divorce month, fact or fiction. It's not actually true. I think that's the gist of it. Oh, sorry, hit my microphone. Yep. While some lawyers see an increase in divorce filings after the holidays, one study said March and August are actually the months when it's more common for couples to split. 
but then there was an argument too that people start thinking about divorce in January, but then the paperwork isn't finished yeah. until March. In California, the paperwork <laughs> will take forever. I know that. Yeah. And that was another thing that they brought up that was kind of hard to determine. Mm-hmm. So California has a six month waiting period. Uh, North Carolina, you have to be separated for a year. <laughs> a year? Yeah. So even, wow. They you have make to be sure. really sure. Yeah. <laughs> you better be sure you don't like this person anymore. <laughs> Man, I was. I, I'm sure, hundred percent. Year rolls around. Damn, it's yeah. still a year. Yeah, it's still. We still married. Count the days. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, that's funny. Wow. All right. Yeah. They also said uh, it was Valentine's Day was a trigger, so that that corresponded with that March date. Mm. And after Valentine's Day, that people break up after Valentine's. They don't want to be single on Valentine's Day. Maybe a lot of people don't like being single on Valentine's Day. Is that yeah? And, or they expect you know their partner will come through and oh, give them the Valentine's yeah. Day of their dreams. Don't date me if you want a Valentine's Day. A <laughs> lot of history on that one. A lot of <laughs> word upset of partners about that one. Yeah, <laughs> word of warning for me. Valentine's Day does not no go. Maybe apps can help. Good more in America. These apps can, may help improve your relationships. We know people are meeting and dating through apps, but now a new genre of phone-based tools that make your marriage or partnership sweeter and more rewarding. What? Matt and... What? I, I, I thought the phones were hurting our relationship. No, no, it's going to make them sweeter and more oh, rewarding. All right, now. all right, I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, it's going to make them sweeter and more rewarding. And Charity are doing it all. She runs her own business. He has a big-time office job. and A big-time office job. I love a big, big-time office job. Yeah. Big-time, as opposed to those small-time office jobs. You don't want the small-time <laughs> office jobs, you want the big-time yeah, office how job. Yeah, how do I know if I have a small yeah. or big <laughs> office job? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Coaches football. Coaches football. Oh, yeah. They have four kids. Ooh, Ooh. Yikes. Craig a lot of kids. is a three ring circus. So we asked them to. Tr- yeah, you have a freaking circus tent too for your house. <laughs> what big is your house? Look at the house there. Wow, wow. Got some pillars in the middle there. Yeah, nice house. Is a three ring circus. So we asked them to try out Love Nudge. It's a communication tool that determines how people feel oh, loved. God. Love Nudge. Is it through <laughs> verbal appreciation, touch, little gifts? Once that's established, the app nudges... <laughs> little gifts, touch, verbal appreciation. Just mm-hmm. each partner to reach out in those specific ways. Love oh, Nudge is one of a growing body of apps that coach people through interpersonal dynamics and help couples uh-huh. feel truly connected. All relationships need work and they need tweaking on a daily basis. You have to be mindful about reaching out to each other physically, verbally, emotionally to keep those bonds strong. Yeah, by not using your freaking phone. Who is this? Who is this hack? What the heck? I'm. What is that? I didn't quite understand. So was the app helping you compose messages? I, it looks like it. It looks like you got little points. I have no idea how this app works. I'm not going to download. It's probably going to track you. Yeah, I'm not convinced Don't download all. apps. The app could help. Besides Love Nudge, this one, Between, is an intimate space for being silly, romantic, Wait, and what? setting... Wait, rep- what? What's an intimate space for being silly? Why? 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 I-, I have an intimate space. If I share space with my partner, isn't that my intimate space? What is this? Isn't that your bed? If you really want intimate space, it's called Signal. If you want an intimate space on your phone, Signal uses end-to-end encryption. This does not. They spy on you. I can almost guarantee you that this service spies on you. I have you read their EULA, and I can almost guarantee you they want to, They want all your data. Reminders of upcoming date nights. But do our busy working or parents feel like... put it on like the, the calendar? Yeah, put it on a calendar, dude. <laughs> what is this? You love me. <laughs> Like they're they're talking about a married couple, right? Yeah, now. this is what they don't know how to function without their what? You guys need counseling or something? You're taking what the hell is going on? You never know how to function as a couple. Nudge app actually brought them closer. I would just call it a great way of bringing us back together. There's certain things that she needs, and there's certain things that she loves. Um, and this is this was a great way to remind me of that. It made me more aware and want to be intentional to make sure that, like, I was doing something thoughtful and intentional to make him feel like words of affirmation. I have definitely <laughs> received a lot more words of affirmation. <laughs> My love tank's cool. Okay, this is insulting on many levels. First of all, this app is insulting because it's called Love Tanks. No, it's called Love Languages. Go over to what is it? www.5, the number five. So five, like five. Numeral five, lovelanguages.com forward slash quizzes. Go there. Find out your love language. There are only five of them. Physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time, access service, or receiving gifts. 
That's what it's what it is. It's real easy. You need to know what you like, how you like to be communicated to love wise, and your partner needs to know their love language. And then guess what? You have to learn to communicate in your partner's love language. So for instance, I don't like receiving gifts. So don't don't give me gifts. But if I had a partner that liked receiving gifts, guess what? I'd have to learn how to give gifts. Because you have, <laughs> that's, that's you have to like be able to communicate in their love language. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a compatibility issue. That's a big one for me. If someone likes giving, getting gifts, oh, love languages aren't the same. Yeah, love languages. You don't need an app for this. Do not download stupid apps to talk to your partner. You don't need that. The phone is a barrier. It's a barrier for everything. It's a barrier. It's a barrier. It's a barrier. Yeah. Think about it. When you take a picture with your phone, you're looking at something and you look at it through your phone. Now you're just putting up that barrier in front of your eyes. Now you're just separating yourself from the moment yeah plus you want to ask your partner how how do they like to be touched specifically yeah is the app going to tell you no yeah, no absolutely not just take this little quiz a love five love languages quiz they're going to try to sell you crap they're a business they have a book it's an author it's a concept it's whatever it's that stuff don't download anything they're pretty <laughs> reputable try to actually get them on the show just stop talking shit about them all right closing out today in this episode of healthy talk show democracy now the game show Jeopardy has sparked outrage. Oh, no. Not Jeopardy. Not Jeopardy. Uh, church Twitter. Built in the 300s AD, the Church of the Nativity. Katie. What is Palestine? No. Jack? What is Israel? That's it. Oh. And that takes you to 2200. Ooh. You're still in third place, however, which of course means that you get to go first in double Jeopardy. In fact, the Church of the Nativity is located in the Palestinian territory of the West Bank, which is occupied by Israel in violation of international Ooh, law. Palestinian awkward. human rights activists have called on Jeopardy to apologize. Ooh, that's an awkward one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's Healthy Talk Show for you. <laughs> you want to know what our love language is? Head on over to HealthyTalkShow.com slash support and show us some love. Remember, our show is value for value. So whatever value re you receive, please give some back by going over to HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. That's right. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. We accept PayPal. Monthly donations help us keep afloat. We're still struggling to buy equipment and get this show, get some other things going. We appreciate the love and support. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash live. Please send your questions, comments, or concerns over at Healthy over to AskHealthyTalkShow.com. Love and light. Love and light.